I got challenged to play as Gondor against Mordor on the beautiful map West Mnet in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 from Mel Gibson himself. He was like, my Mordor is gonna crush your Gondor shanks, trust me that one. And here we are on the epic map West Mnet, grassy lands of Rohan lying between the Entwash and the Eisen River. El Clasico matchup good against Evil, you love to see it. And at the beginning of the game, I personally open on this map with one blacksmith only. This way, I don't need to wait to capture all the settlements outside. One thing you gotta keep in mind is if you have to make a choice, always choose to get the outside farms first because they will start with level 2, which means more money and also more tankiness. And you can always fill up your base later on. But at the beginning, that's the plan. We will use the Hobbit to grab the farm behind our base and one of the soldiers to, you know, each farms on the right and also on the left side and our plan is simple when you play against Mordoras or against Isengard against evil factions pretty much you want to put pressure you want to try to deal as much economical damage as you can otherwise Mordor is gonna grow rich and you will have to deal with Felbees, Nazgûs, Witch King, Mumakil, Strolls and you guys know Mordor is a is a time bomb you know the more you wait the more the explosion is gonna hit you like a truck and for that reason, we need to play a bit more smarter and focus all the time on the map control. And West Amnet is actually a great map for the Mordor faction because there are like two troll layers in the middle and the distance from me to his own castle is a long one. The golem is gonna be annoying, we can turn and fight them. Orcs, they don't stand a chance against the mighty soldiers of Gondor. And now golem is, has to retreat. Our goal is to just destroy this Lamar Mill. That's all we can do really do we won't be able to achieve too much more but it's fine maybe we can even now nah, yes orcs here or we can pick up the heal because we already got damaged and oh this mill looks free okay i mean oh i wish i would actually pick the elven wood because he used the uh, eye of sauron so early you know now that's bad for me i mean i won't be able to Take down the mill that's why i think the best thing that we can do is you know try to at least some deal some damage running away is not an option and yeah i mean the early game could be a bit better but it's not the end of the world because we will at least be able to take down one of the settlements and as gondor against mordor you won't have the chance to deal much more damage than that i mean we had like the option to creep too basically there is a goblin layer at the top left side uh, but that would also take a long time and it's a risky situation in which the golem might get the last hit might steal the money because golem is so incredibly squishy i mean like slippery you know what i'm saying he's so fast invisible getting invisible from time to time hold on a second peregrine took can you kill some workers i mean at least we keep him busy right it's good now we need to build the stable i was cash oh my goodness my hobbit the full of a took has been legit one-shotted I mean, it's not the end of the world, because. but the thing is, we need to revive him, right? We need to try to keep the opening busy, because I don't want to lose every single farm outside. We went for like a greedy opening, we went for a stable after the first farm in the blacksmith inside the castle. Normally, I don't like to do that. Normally, I want to build a blacksmith in two farms before the stable. This way, I will get more food bonus, more discount on the Gondonites, but... I wanted to get the Gondonites a little bit earlier, and we have also three settlements outside, so it's not the end of the world, but... Uh, if we lose these settlements outside now, it's going to be quite painful. And we will be stuck to the one Gondonite. We won't be able to fill up the bees as soon as we need to, right? Okay, so 640. When we lose the farms, every farm is going to make... Every farm we lose is going to increase the cost of these Gondonites a bit. And the original cost, which is unchanged from the beginning, is 800. Right? When you have zero farms, that's the money you need to pay for one single Gondonite battalion. And... You don't want to pay this money. It's so expensive, you know? Okay, so we need to defend this first, and then we can use the Gondonites to deal economical damage by destroying the Slammer Mills. That's the plan. We need the second one also, ASAP. And then, um, I have actually a couple of ideas. What we can do in this matchup, because there are like uh, two troll layers in the middle of the map, we can actually recruit Boromir. And Boromir is a phenomenal hero when it comes to Creeper troll layer. Because he has the passive, every time he auto-attacks, he will knock down the troll on the ground, even though troll would normally be able to 1v1 Boromir, because troll is hitting like a truck and also being tanky, but he won't get the chance to hit us, right? Boromir will knock him down all the time, 
And the good thing is, once we are done creeping with Boromir, we will get level 4. Remember Faramir and Boromir, these two heroes, they start the game by being level 3, and Boromir has a massive power spike with level 4, which means more DPS. And we might need to use that later on to deal the damage, the burst damage we need to, you know, finish off the trolls, the Nazgûs, and the Witch King. Okay, so we destroyed one of the mills, and now we need to go to the back mill. And unfortunately, we lost this farm, but it's okay. It's not horrible. And what I want to do is I want to use this Gondor Knight, um, this one to kill this, and the other one to kill the one behind. And what I would also love to do is recruit a third Gondor Knight, but not yet. We need to be a bit more patient. We need to get a bit more eco going. And you have a couple of options when you play this matchup. If you have a phenomenal start, which would mean you can legit destroy two of the three Lamy Mills, then you can go for upgrades. You can try to get to the power point of the rangers, then you can go for shields and also forge plates and try to rush Mordor down. However, this is risky because Mordor sometimes can actually manage to save up for a fell beast quite early. And if this is going to be the case, your money investment into the upgrades is going to be a complete waste. Rally together, knights. Rally together, knights. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, he has zero settlements as we are talking. I mean, this mill was just recaptured. We can now try to start to creep. Start creeping. There are multiple creeps, goblin layers, troll layers, and ward layers on this map. And the more power points we get, the better it is, obviously. We can try to go for the, for the ranger summon. We can try to go for the Gandalf. But before Gandalf, I want to secure myself the map control. And I believe investments like Farami and Boromir can be a great choice. However, before that, we gotta fill up the base first, right? That's the, that's the initial plan. We have lost one of the farms, but we will be reclaiming it now. And from the creeps we will get, which are going to be most likely uncontested, we will also get more and more money. So we should be in a good spot. Okay, so... Let's recapture everything. Let's, you know, start creeping and Boromir. Boromir, Aramir, Outpost Control, or, or Gandalf. This, oh, okay, I'm not gonna trample them, because they have, he has used the uh, Tainted Land. Obviously, I'm in a situation in which I could cover this Tainted Land, but as you can see, my Gondonites are already badly damaged, and I don't want to trample anyway, so using the Alvin Wood there would not be the greatest choice of all time. It would slow, that would slow us down and delay our Ranger Special Summon, or delay our Gandalf to bite, so we don't want to do that, right? Okay, so creeping, 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 and now we need Boromir. Once we have the money, 1400 is needed, and we can get this after getting all this money from the ground. So we have almost the money, almost the money. Now we can get Boromir. Get the money, get the money, get the money, and now Boromir. Bromir. Okay, so... Boromir is also very good against Mordor. So there are like multiple effects from Boromir, which makes him to a very valuable hero in this matchup. First is obviously his knockdown, knock up. So basically every time a troll charges us down, we can use Boromir as like the front line and attack the trolls one by one to knock them down on the ground one by one. This is going to buy us more time to burst down these trolls with Faramir and ranges later on. The second is the damage leadership, right? That's very important. Ar Faramir and also Gandalf are only offering us armor leadership, which is quite good, but not against Mordor, because against Mordor, you need to get more DPS to burst down the trolls before they burst you. So regardless how much armor leadership you get, if trolls with Tramor Troll and the Witch King charging you down, they will one-shot your army regardless, right? And for that reason, DPS is better. Offense is the best defense. And the third reason is because of the um, village. So Boromir in the Passion Point 2 2 has now with level 6 the Glory of Gondor ability, which means we get money for killing enemy units, right? That's three very good effects and three main reasons why we should be recruiting him. And as you can see, Boromir is doing a good job. I mean, the problem is that he has many, many Haradlims and our Gondor Knights have no upgrades. So we gotta be careful about the situation. I'm gonna just summon the rangers here because I believe there are so many creeps still left on this map and we will get the chance to kill so many orcs that we should still be able to get the Gandalf to white power points. I believe. But first of all, let's focus on the map control. Gandalf can wait and the more money you have, the faster you will get Gandalf anyway. So, Bonnie Arrow. Boom. Nice. 
and Farami is gonna get level 4. But unlike his brother, Farami needs to be level 5 to unlock his own leadership, which is more armor and also fear resistant. Regroup behind the wall! Let us prepare for this war. Improve the smithy. Warriors advance. Okay, Poromia. You got this, my friend. Look at him. Look how serious he's looking like. I mean, my ranger summon was actually kind of useless. Not gonna lie. We killed nothing but orcs. So, you know, I gotta be honest. That's not uh, what I wanted to achieve with that. But my fat fingers, you know, like... Didn't think in long terms, but it's it's okay. We might need them later on. It's not the end of the world. Having additional summons is always a good thing in Battle for Middle Earth games. I want to make sure that Farami is getting the last hit. Boromi doesn't need that. Boromi is already level 4. Level 5, the Horn of Condor is not very useful against Mordor because monsters, which is the primary army of Mordor, are immune to fear anyway. They cannot be stunned. So let's get the farm. We have great amount of map control. Our money is going to look amazing very soon. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we will, we will first of all recruit three archers, right? That required amount of archers we need to get the archer range to level 2. That's the first step. Second step is we're gonna recruit Gandalf, and then we will be providing fire arrows, and every single outpost we can capture will be captured, and then in every single one of these outposts, we will be placing one ranger battalion with a statue. So basically, this is going to be a great protection from one single unit only, just in case he might send some like one or two trolls, he might send some orcs. The outpost can this way protect and defend itself. So I don't need to rotate all the time, you know? We'll claim this area. Smother them! Smother them! Back away. Okay, so I mean, I don't know what he's cooking, right? I don't know if he has more kills. I don't think so because I would hear that. Uh, I don't think he has more kills. I don't know how much he needs for a witch king, but even if he goes for the witch king at this point of the game. I think it's going to be a little bit too late because, ladies and gentlemen, Mifrandia, the White Rider, is about to join the battlefield. He captured another outpost. This outpost. Did you see what I did, by the way, at the outpost? I forgot to mention that, sorry. So I was sending Farami and Boromir first. This way, they would tank the Haradrims on top of the outpost. It's very important. If you if you send your Gondonites first, your Gondonites will die. But heroes are much more resistant against those spear throwers of the Haradrim Palace. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to. Look at this. The sun is rising. And I, I like Gondor a lot, guys. Dude, the entire... Gondor is such a unique faction because you have so many different possibilities in long terms. Early on, it's a little bit rough, which kind of makes sense for a very hard skilling faction like Gondor. Your early game is kind of meh. I mean, for me personally, the best early game faction is definitely Rohan. Because Rohan is legit able to use the resource buildings as production buildings, which is kind of busted. And uh, then it comes uh, Isengard and Mordor. Gondor is the last by far. But for that reason, Gondor's mid to late game is pretty strong. Has the best summons in the game. Has the best hero in the game. Gandalf is unmatched. Like, obviously you need to spend 6,000, so he better pays off. And when you spend 6,000, he's not going to be even that great. You need to invest also 2 power points just to make him more viable, just to make him more strong. I stand as your but he's worth it. Okay, so we have map control, that's good. And I will also build the marketplace later on, you know? Just, guys, always hope... I mean, this game is looking phenomenal for us, right? But there is always a potential of throwing the lead, and then you might give the enemy a momentum of a counter push. And this would cause us to eventually lose the game. So basically, hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. That is going to be our battle strategy, okay? Okay, so, I mean, he has only one single outpost, we know that. He has also, like, only one farm or one uh, mill outside. Now, for the second land, we will have also our own land ready and available. He will be losing those outposts once again. We can use Easterlight on top of these Haradrims and kill them. Then we can commit with our Gondor Knights right after. So that's the plan. Great. Amazing. So let's kill those Lora Houses. Um, to be honest, I don't know what I'm expecting. Like, I see a couple of Haradrims in Orcs, but nothing too crazy. Maybe we hear some, like, a big army cooking inside the castle. I don't know. But what I know is we need to get many, many more archers. And I like to play it slow, you know? I don't want to go to the base right off the bat while he has settlements outside. So what I want to do is I want to make it step by step. 
kill his farms, settlements, outposts first, surround him from both the sides and giving him no option. So even if he lose the battle, we know he has not enough sustain to replace the units he loses. But we do, right? That's what you want to achieve. And we are doing a phenomenal job. So Gondor is actually popping off now. We have all four outposts under our control. <laughs> He's trying to put some pressure on the minimap by sending orcs forward, but we have three Gondor Knights. We can also now start buying finally upgrades like the shields from the Night Shield and also heavy armor and forge plates, but after the Grand Harvest. Okay, so Grand Harvest is incoming, which means 40% more money. And with this much map control, it's going to pay us, uh, pay us out so incredibly a lot of money. We are going to be Ellen Mask of Battle for Middle Earth games. Okay, so let's once again, that's the plan, put rangers everywhere, right? Everywhere we gotta put them and place them in. And we don't give them the chance to kill any of the farms. Now I want to go for the shields first, the night shields, and then heavy armor, I mean first night shields, then forge plates, then heavy armor, then more rangers eventually, depends on what he got, and I will go soon guys, don't worry, again you want to play it a little bit slow, you know, against Mordor, Mordor is a scary faction, you don't want to give him the chance to come back. Okay, so let's destroy this. Be gone. You are not getting any money this game, my friend. Okay, shields getting purchased, that's beautiful. And then blades, then heavy armor, and we are golden. So now what we can do is we can test the waters a little bit. Once we are healed up, I want to go and see what is going on inside the Mordor Castle. What is awaiting us? Is he going for moment kills, catapults? I don't know. We will find out. I mean, we, oh, he has a troll cage. So he has a troll cage. He has one troll only. Really? We can summon the range. Oh, he has more trolls. More trolls. So I want to use warning arrow and let's summon the rangers. The troll is going to be chunked now from the warning arrow. He has in total four trolls, one drummer troll, five trolls actually. And many, many soldiers of rune. So, and you see, that's the reason why you always need to have a backup plan. Because the thing is, if you commit now on a fight, and we lose everything, those trolls, they have the chance and the power and the strength to actually force us back and try to take down even our castle. Oh, be careful, Gandalf. Okay, he's coming. I don't know. He's walking. Okay, he's charging now. One of the trolls was able to knock them down. So we need to kind of save Faramir. Faramir is getting chunked. Faramir, let's use Easter Light on this troll to save Faramir. Faramir, you are saved. I got you, bro. Okay, we need to try to beat him into the outpost. In the outpost, we have rangers, which can shoot the, the, uh, these trolls down. I want to use... There we go. You see? Pew, 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 pew. And the troll can't stand this much damage. Because we have also Boromir near, near this. So I want to give them also blades, um, you know, heavy arm... Not heavy arm. Yeah, heavy armor too, but also fire arrows. Because I want to sandwich him. I want to put pressure from both the sides at the same time. Let's go for iron ore just to get more money. Just why not? I don't want to spend... Or I don't want to collect too much money. I like to keep spending money because now there is no reason for us whatsoever to collect more money than we need to, right? We have Gandalf, we have all the heroes. The only hero is missing full of a took, <laughs> and that's it. And now we can go for another... I want to take down the troll cage. That's my primary target and also his Haradrim palace, but it's easier said than done. We can also Vizap Blast on this troll. Let's Vizap Blast him. Hopefully, it's going to knock, knock him down, please. Come on, Gandalf, do it! Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> he didn't want to get knocked down. We, we get more trolls. Some, uh, he gets more trolls. I want to use now uh, the Easter Light. Okay, so we gotta be careful. We killed um, his troll with the Easter Light, but I don't want to lose any of these Gunner Knights. That's very important. Okay, uh, take down the troll kitsch, please, please. Okay, abort the mission now, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Mission accomplished, actually. That's what we wanted, right? That's what we wanted, and we accomplished it perfectly. So we now, we know now that he has not the chance to recruit any more trolls anytime soon. Even if he builds up the, steep, um, the troll cage once again, his production will be slowed down. Because from a level 2 building, you can recruit faster because of the, the production speed bonus. And also, he will need to invest time and also money, obviously, 
would he place the troll cage and he has only one single uh, lumber mill that means he has zero wood bonus he has to pay the 1200 full price okay he's trying to defend against our gonda arches i'm willing to lose them but now i gotta put pressure from the other side you want to split the map the, the second you have an advantage the second you know you have more units available instead of trying to commit on a big one fight you can try your best to split the fight into multiple pieces can get advantage over your increased command points over the fact that you have more units available on the field the troll cage is going down once again we have almost the eagle special summon ladies and gentlemen almost the eagle special summon all oh, the trolls are charging he's using land but i have also my own land Bro, Boromir, now it's time your to show your quality. Knock them down on the ground. Okay, nice. Boromir is level 5. He has even darkness, but the darkness was used after the trolls are down. I think he didn't have the power points for that. The eagles, the eagles are coming. Let's use the lightning sword also on the on the Baradur. Oh, I can't... <laughs> My bad. I was grouping them in number 2, you know. Let's use heal. And that might be the end of the game, guys. We have level 10, level 9 Gondor Knights. Level 7 Gondor Knights. Eagles are finishing off the base with the help of the Rangers, Boromir, Faramir, legit everything that Gondor offers. We have recruited this team beside the barracks units, which you don't need, you know, you don't need to make combos against Mordor. You want to make only archers. First of all, combos cost more command points and also they, lead, they lose strength in movement speed. Plus, they have not the chance to use the wedge formation or the skirmish formation in this case to increase your dps once again against trolls it's better to go full damage mode and not go tanky gg well played guys i hope you enjoyed this little challenge here between mordor and gondor i hope to see you next time until then keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out in 55 to 25 by the way we are popping off